Welcome to another exciting edition of WatchGuard Technologies Firebytes. This session we're actually covering cloud Wi-Fi and this is episode two of three. I'm actually hosting this series with my counterpart Julio Martin, who together we are responsible for the whole West Coast uh, of uh, sales engineers from WatchGuard. So I just wanna um, actually point out here, we have the webinar, or uh, excuse me, our YouTube channel on there so that you can catch up, go back and view episode one. Now, as I was going through this, I thought to myself, gosh, I really feel bad because, you know, half an hour we're jam packing this thing with um, new features. This is a complete revolutionary new line from WatchGuard. So unfortunately, it's not gonna do it as much justice as I would like to do. Now, if you have specific areas that you would actually like me to cover in addition to what we're gonna cover today, Feel free to let me know, but today we're actually going to uh, just kick things off, um, talk about the management. So we're going to go right into a quick review of the secure cloud Wi-Fi offerings. Now, as you um, may have seen with my previous Firebytes, I really like to throw away the slides and go into a live environment. So um, with that, we'll spend as little time as possible in the slides. However, there are some... Um, you know, for a speed of time and whatnot, there are some screenshots that we'll just reference from the slides. So again, looking at today's agenda, quick review of a secure cloud Wi-Fi. We're gonna do a cloud Wi-Fi configuration, how to get to the dashboard, how to create those uh, templates, uh, Wi-Fi SSIDs in there, and then obviously a big driver of our um, new uh, revolutionary access points are the WIPs, Wireless Intrusion Prevention uh, Services how to configure those and how to automatically have those um, protect your network uh, with minimal effort. And then if we have time, we're gonna also look at some of those advanced features that our access points have. Now, those of you that are partners on the line um, know that uh, we just launched our cloud Wi-Fi certification exam. Uh, so that's available through Criterion, just like you would uh, take with your other ones. And uh, so feel free to go ahead and get that scheduled as well. So as we look at the um, secure cloud Wi-Fi offerings, again, just a recap on that, we actually have two models, the AP320, which is the biggest differentiator is a three by three as opposed to the AP120, that's a two by two on there. So as we look at that, again, it's going to um, also act as a WIP sensor and do background scanning. Um, one of the big, uh, features I love touting to people, people have been asking for a little bit how we can do meshing. Uh, these will both do meshing uh, out of the gate. Now as we look at the management options, many of you uh, that are with us are familiar with what we've been doing previously with the gateway wireless controller um, with access points. We're extending that same management option to our new access points in addition to having a cloud Wi-Fi offering. Now, when we look at the feature set available, we have a full um, featured Wi-Fi cloud, the Go mobile app, which Julio did an excellent job of covering. We are offering um, the patented wireless security and threat pre prevention through the cloud, stateful firewall and application visibility, Wi-Fi analytics and engagement tools, which Julio is going to cover on the next session, um, which will give you the date at the end as well on there. Now, obviously the best scenario is to have your access points behind the um, WatchGuard firewall and using the cloud subscription. The other thing I was um, thinking about as well is uh, some of you have questions what, let's say you buy the cloud subscription and you do, don't wanna, uh, um, for some reason, leverage those uh, security components. You can actually bump that down um, and change over that access point to be a uh, gateway wireless controlled access point from there. So as we look at, we dive in again, we're gonna spend as little time in the slides as possible, the Wi-Fi configuration. And we're gonna just bounce back and forth between uh, the slides and the um, actual hands-on presentation. So getting to the dashboard is relatively simple. We're just gonna to go to the customer support center portal through my WatchGuard login manage Wi-Fi cloud as you can see uh, right here. TDR again, just to tout that, we'll have some series on TDR threat detection and response. Again, one of the biggest um, uh, killers for uh, crypto wall ransomware, that's gonna be your biggest um, 
service coming up. But today we're focusing on a managed Wi-Fi cloud, or you can go directly to the Wi-Fi dashboard simply by logging in. So as we um, flip over, uh, let's see here, cloud Wi-Fi configuration, my apologies. Uh, we took a step back. Just want to go over, um, again, Julio mentioned the Go application that you can configure your, your access points. If you have a coffee shop that you need to configure, you can actually just use your mobile phone, take pictures of the um, car coffee of the day. Maybe you have some new latte art that you want to display on there, on that um, uh, sign-in page. You just pick up your phone, go to the web app, um, the Go app, and take a picture of that. One of the biggest uh, um, differentiators as well uh, with our new access points is that they are friendly Wi-Fi accredited. So you can actually go in right to the um, mobile app, the Go app, go to advanced, and as you can see here, we're doing content filtering based on uh, DHCP. Um, and my apologies there. Content filtering based on DHCP, where we're able to say, let's block security, um, and maybe adult content and other um, inappropriate content, so that if someone's sitting in your coffee shop, they're not um, uh, exposing um, any inappropriate web content to other people. So that's available through the Go app, and again, that's just um, doing a DHCP or DNS blocking on there. It allows you to configure that uh, friendly Wi-Fi and appropriate web blocking, and then it um, does online management, which we're going to focus on today from there. So as we look at how we're going to configure those, again, just a step-by-step -step process, we're going to, and this is assumed that you've already gone in and registered your new um, AP320 or AP120, your new WatchGuard access points. So we're going to configure those access points. We're, um, some of the steps that we're going to take today is setting up those SSID profiles. We're going to configure that uh, device template. We're going to show you that hierarchical uh, structure so that we can um, base things on either geographic locations or maybe multiple locations that you have. Um, and we'll go over how easy that is uh, to configure. And then at the end, we're going to configure WIPs, um, configure those existing networks. And as Julio did an excellent job of mentioning, our new WatchGuard access points can actually sit in conjunction with, let's say you have Aruba or Cisco access points, and you want that patented security of those marker packets um, that was mentioned to be able to take those clients offline. Um, those rogue access points or rogue clients offline automatically, we can put in WatchGuard access points alongside of those and configure everything um, for a secure environment. Configure the WIPs level and then activate WIPs from there. So let's go in, um, dive right in and create a Wi-Fi SSID on there. So let me just switch over to um, my web browser here. And again, as I'm going through this, if you have any additional um, features that you want me to dive in, use the com comments pane or contact us um, and let us know, and we will drive those future Firebyte sessions based on um, what you want. So just to recap, um, I've logged into the Support Center, Manage Wi-Fi Cloud. That brings me directly into the dashboard launch pad. So as we mentioned, here's the Go app um, that you could just get to from your, um, your mobile device, your iPhone, what have you. And we have a couple of different options here. So Julio is going to be going over Analyze, which is ultimately engaging those customers, Wi-Fi customers, looking at your footfall traffic, whether or not people came into your store, um, and then the engagement tools as well. Today we're going to be focusing on the management uh, portion of that. So as we look at um, the management portion, just to recap, again, we're looking at a hierarchy structure um, of an organization. So if you, this was your organization, you wanted to break it down into geographic locations. I've seen some organizations as well, maybe restaurants, break it down by um, the franchise owner um, and then to be able to manage that. And what ultimately that provides me the ability to do is I can configure policy at this level and have it inherited all the way down to whatever level I want. That makes it extremely easy if I want to make changes, I want to roll up new SSIDs, new uh, guest networks, maybe I want to change VLANs. It's extremely easy then to just have that be rolled all the way out to your organization. So right from here we're looking at the dashboard. Now one of the first things we want to do is go ahead and um, create that uh, Wi-Fi SSID. So we can just go under configuration, um, 
device configuration, and we go into our SSID profile from here. So in this case, let's just go ahead and click on Add New Wi-Fi Profile, and we'll just walk through, again, a high-level um, overview of the steps of uh, some of these uh, features, and then if we need to, we can uh, dive in for future sessions on here. So for today's session, I'm just going to label this as um, a new Wi-Fi um, profile here. And then from here, we look at, um, this is the profile name, the new SSID name. So if we wanted to do WatchGuard uh, Firebytes SSID, and we can specify whether or not we want to broadcast this. Again, these are a lot of, um, a lot of these features you're going to be uh, used to seeing across other uh, Wi-Fi access points. So it shouldn't be that new to uh, um, other people. And certainly we'll cover the things that uh, differentiate WatchGuard uh, with our access points. So with application visibility, what that's going to give us is that um, visibility down to the device on what they're using, Google, um, and that's your Wi-Fi traffic from there. Maybe it's streaming media. And again, this is on the access point level, so we can go ahead and have that visibility. Maybe we don't, um, they have another uh, firewall today, and you're rolling in watch card access points. This allows these access points to play in um, other environments as well. So we have application visibility. We can see what applications are running on that mobile device. We also have association analytics, um, and we can do content analytics. So what this allows us to do as users join our Wi-Fi networks, we can say, you know what, um, maybe we're a mom and pop, a retail shop, and oftentimes what I've uh, seen other people do and, and um, I've done myself, you go into a store, you do a price match on maybe Amazon, put it in your cart. What we can actually do is intercept that, as um, Julio mentioned last week, and we'll certainly cover as well, uh, not last week, last episode, certainly cover next episode as well, is how to capture that audience that rather than let that customer walk out the door with making a purchase at Amazon, we're going to intercept that, um, give them a, um, some kind of coupon code that says, hey, take this to the cash register um, and we'll get 10% off or we'll do a price match. And we can do that through content analytics as well as association analytics. So when we look at security, obviously if it's a guest Wi-Fi access point, we can um, just do open security, WPA2. Again, no big surprises here. Um, we're just going to do, uh, let's put in a passphrase here. And let's just make sure we've got WatchGuard rocks. Uh, we have our radius setting. So again, no big surprise that we're able to uh, leverage radius with this. Now client isolation, we had those features previously, but that's just going to allow us to, if we have a, um, a guest network, it's going to stop um, the client A from being able to communicate with client B. As we see a lot of these viruses out there, they actually try to do cross-contamination, et cetera. So we're able just to um, isolate those clients as needed. We can tie directly into our VLANs. Now, natively, everything is a VLAN uh, zero. If we wanted to, we can create um, two networks, right? We have our private network that a lot of your organizations have, and then we have a guest network. Just make sure, please, 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 as a security precaution, Make sure that if you're responsible for a network, either your own organization, and you have a guest network, do not put that guest network on the same network as a retail location. I went into an organization just a couple of weeks ago where I look and join their public Wi-Fi, and I was on the same network as their point of sale systems. Very bad security practice, so please, please, please isolate those if you have that option and you're responsible for that. We can actually do and NAT Kip. on here. Hi, hi, Johan. Sorry to interrupt. Um, we've got a couple of requests. If you could enlarge uh, the screen. A couple of folks are having a hard okay. time reading the screen. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to interrupt you. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you for that feedback. That means people are engaged and um, they're trying to read it. Hopefully this makes it a little bit easier. And uh, my apologies. Thank you, Wendy. So, as I was saying, with uh, guest Wi-Fi networks, make sure that you're isolating that on there. Now, if you need to, we can actually provide a NAT, a network address translation network. Again, not the most secure environment, but it's able to separate that um, out from there. We have Captive Portal, which um, basically is going to say, you know what, we want to um, have someone, you've been to an airport probably, where you've joined their guest Wi-Fi network, 
and they have their captive, captive portal pop up. Maybe it's a commercial video or other advertisement. And certainly um, you can do that through a captive portal, which we'll be talking about as well. We have our content um, analytics, again, part of just being able to intercept that it's um, they're trying to go to Amazon.com, and we want to block that and keep that um, uh, sale on premise. So with this, we with our um, access points, we actually have a firewall in there as well. Again, not as uh, secure as a WatchGuard UTM, and that's where you know I display that slide. And the best security is it um, leveraging the WatchGuard Firebox uh, UTM services along with the access point. But in this case, we can basically just make a packet filter rule where we're allowing deny denying certain traffic on ports on there from the um, as a very simplistic firewall. Now, one of the other things that I see is that a lot of, um, when we talk about secu best security practices, and I go out and I uh, speak across the country, and I ask people, how many of you actually have guest Wi-Fi? And no surprise, we've seen an uptick, and the majority of people have guest wireless uh, services. Now, the next question is, how many of you actually turn on or um, actually have your guest Wi-Fi access 24-7 when you might have only an eight-hour, um, eight-to-five business? Why are you having that uh, Wi-Fi being published to the outside world outside of your business hours? So certainly, SSID scheduling is an important part of that. What we can do is uh, schedule that. We can actually say, you know what? Maybe there's a trade show coming to my building, and I want to just go ahead and schedule that SSID um, for an, uh, uh, a certain time frame, and we can certainly do that through uh, scheduling. Traffic management, QoS, we're able to um, restrict that, uh, those clients on traffic management uh, from there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Save. Now, as we um, can see here, the SSID profile was added successfully. We see that... Um, in fact, let me go ahead and I think I have an extra character here. We can go ahead and uh, save that. So now we have that SSID. So now the next step is being able to apply that SSID to a template. So going in, um, what we want to do then is go into uh, a device configuration, back one. We go into device templates. So on here, I'm just going to say, let's go ahead and make a new template just like we did today, Firebytes uh, template. We can create a um, uh, description as well from there. We're able to um, input device settings. So here is our device password, which is going to sync up with our cloud uh, controller. Now, again, our access points don't need an on-prem cloud control or on-prem controller, so that if you need to increase capacity, maybe you outgrow a cloud controller with some of our competitors, you actually don't outgrow with WatchGuard. It simply uh, joins to um, the cloud on there. So NTP device access logs, again, a very um, uh, common settings here, your radio settings. So now um, we're going to go into our 320, and we're going to configure our a 320 um, radio from here. So we could say this one is an access point or a WIP sensor. Now, if we were, um, maybe we had a Aruba Wi-Fi network and we wanted to bring in WatchGuard access points for that uh, WIPs protection, we can go ahead and just create that as a WIP sensor from there. The important part with this is that we're going to add a SSID a profile. So just like we mentioned, um, with we're going to assign our uh, Firebytes SSID. This is our 2.4 range. We also have, a, obviously, a 5 gigahertz with an AC radio in there, wave one. We're able to um, assign channel width, enable dynamic channel switching. And I'm just going to add this on um, to my 5 gig um, radio as well. We have our background scan settings. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And it wants to tell me that it can't be bl um, blank, so I'm going to create a password here. So now I've created a template. So now what are the next steps that we need to do? So this is assuming that you've um, taken your access point, you've unboxed it, um, you've registered it. The first thing it's going to do is go into your account into this unknown category or into this unknown uh, container. Now we can go into monitoring, manage device, and we see our new device in here. So what we can actually do is uh, select that device now, the interesting thing about this is that we can go in, um, we can view all sorts of uh, statistic, uh, statistics about that device, which I'll show you a little bit later. But we can go in and take that device, 
and move it to um, wherever structure we want to do from there. So in this case, um, we want to change location, move it to maybe our Colorado location, and then it's going to inherit all of our policies based on our Colorado uh, location. So again, extremely easy to roll out new devices from there. Some of the other things that we can do from there is a reboot. We can do a packet capture right from your access point. So let's say you're responsible for uh, managing a location 3,000 miles away from your office. You can actually just do a, a packet capture right from where you're at. So I'm going to go ahead and say, you know what, this one's actually going to my, um, let's say it's at corporate headquarters, HQ location. We're going to say um, it's... Uh, previously was on their uh, system default template. I'm going to go ahead and um, say let's go ahead and retain that. If I want to I can actually go in then and change that. So we can see here that it's a system template. I can go ahead and change that to my um, the Firebytes template, the one that we just set up. Save it and now it's going to reboot that if um, necessary and change that uh, for me. So now we have um, created a SSID template. We've created, assigned the template um, to our access point, which then assigns that SSID profile. We're now looking at, um, we've done the uh, monitoring managed devices, which shows us all of our devices for our location. Um, we've moved that new access point that we just registered into here and um, assigned. So now our next step, I'm just going to go back to our slide real quick here, is reviewing and configuring our WIPs, wireless intrusion prevention uh, services from there. So just to recap a little bit so we all understand how this is actually working, um, this is actually a patented technology um, that WatchGuard has, and ultimately it's able to automatically um, view if something's external, if it's on the network, and we'll talk about how that process works. So let's say this is my um, my environment here uh, with this Visio diagram. I plugged in my AP320. What it's actually doing is sending out marker packets on the wired side. So we have two different um, detection systems. We have the wireless, wired side, and we have a wireless side as detection as well. So in this case, we're doing a wired side injection. We're sending out packets injecting them on the wire and we're looking to see much like um, we're looking to see if we see them surface in any other area on the network much like um, in the olden days when you had a flat tire in your bike and you wanted to find out where that air hole was that you needed to patch you'd pump up that tire put it under um, in water and soap and find out where those air bubbles were surfacing from same th same principle is um, here we're looking at where those are surfacing on the uh, network from. And what we're able to do then is also look at the wireless side injection. So we pass those uh, packets over the air and see if they come in to the network in a specific location. So again, as we look at rogue access points on the network, you know, in the olden days it used to be that our access points were pretty huge and um, pretty easy to identify on a network. Nowadays, there's USB access points that are smaller than thumb drives, which someone could have plugged into the back of their computer or someone plugged it into the back of their computer without actually knowing it's there. Um, maybe it's trying to sniff out credentials or it's trying to do um, some sort of um, uh, break-in uh, through that, either by sniffing those packets or, again, as I mentioned, by the, those credentials. So we're able to identify where those are. And how does that actually look? So as we um, see here, we're able to identify those rogue access points. As I mentioned, um, we're able to coexist uh, our WatchGuard WIP sensors alongside of any of our competitors as well. How does that actually look when we're um, automatically and effectively identifying those rogue access points? So again, in the, uh, this scenario, where we go to monitoring and then we're going to look at our rogue access points. So let me just switch back over. So as I go into monitoring and go back one, um, one thing I did want to mention real quick as we go through here, I did mention when we look at the application visibility, we can see here ICMP, we see Citrix go to meeting, which is where this uh, session is originating from, how much bandwidth is there. So again, that's part of that application visibility um, that we're seeing that. As we look at uh, security, 
um, how that access point is effectively identifying those rogue access points. So here we're looking at any access points that are on the network that are authorized, rogue, and then as we can see here, we're actually able to identify external um, access points as well. Now this is a key part because um, you might have read in the news where Marriott was fined uh, quite a bit of money because they took down their neighbor's Wi-Fi, right? They sent the off packets, or um, certainly if you're Starbucks, you don't want to take down your neighbor, um, your neighbor's Wi-Fi because the FCC could come back and find you. So having this ability to see exactly what access points are external because those packets aren't leaking out um, through the network, those marker packets, right? They didn't touch any of this. So again, we're able to just quickly identify what are external, and again, that protects your network with minimal uh, touching uh, of that network. So going back, we're gonna look at authorized access points. These are all the access points that are on my network. And then this is actually, um, when we look at uh, rogue access points, this is actually a pineapple that I have on my network. Now, if I needed to, I could actually go in and um, mark this and say, you know what, we want to change the category. It's authorized. That should be on the network because maybe we're doing some pen testing and we want our pen tester to be able to identify that. But certainly in this case, uh, they're rogue access points from here. We can actually go in, look at clients as well. What um, clients are on there? What clients are um, rogue or external? Uh, you know, we can actually say, gosh, um, maybe someone is uh, doing a hotspot from a phone, trying to break into a network. We're able to identify that and move them out. And basically what um, happens then, the next step is that we can configure WIPs to automatically send DOS packets to them. Maybe we have a um, corporate device that people are trying to um, access some inappropriate web content. They go ahead and try to um, spin up a hotspot. We're able to send the auth packets and flip them back to our corporate network from there. Um, and then we have our security networks, so we're able to see what IPs are running on our networks from there. So then the next step is to configure that um, authorized um, wireless LAN policy from there. So we can go under configuration, and basically this is saying, um, let's go back one into WIPs, and this is basically saying these are the access points or SSIDs running on my network. Don't um, do any, don't uh, de-auth them. And this is a perfect scenario if I wanted to run WatchGuard um, sensors alongside of our competitors. We would basically say, you know what, we have a, um, a guest network here. Don't knock them off. We have a wireless network. We have free Wi-Fi. Um, don't do anything uh, for that. Now, a lot of times what I actually hear as well from there is that um, people will say, let's just take a look at this. Can't we say, you know, um, we have maybe all watch guard access points. Can't we just say we don't want any, um, uh, let's say, Linksys access points. We don't want anyone going to Best Buy putting in a Linksys. As many of you know, I came from an education um, background, and a lot of teachers would just go out in the beginning days of Wi-Fi and go to Best Buy, put in a Linksys access point, and really uh, minimize the security um, in the school district. So what we're able to say is um, go in and specify, um, that was a bad case, let's go into a policy templates that was being inherited. So we can just go in and say, these are the access points that are allowed on my network. Um, so we can say, you know what, only allow WatchGuard access points. And then if I could spell, watch card access points, and then everything else is going to be kicked offline. So again, an important part of that uh, WIPs security on the network. So once we've configured, um, let's just take a look at uh, what we've configured here. We're going to take one network. We're saying network protocol so we can base it on, and again, these are being inherited because I just want to apply one policy on my Logifuse container that's going to propagate down to um, each location. So in this case, in fact, let's just go back to my location here. So now we can see that um, it's changeable and not being inherited. But we could say, gosh, we're running a B and G networks. We don't have any B running. Let's go ahead and isolate that. We could do that. We could say any security settings, authentication type. And again, these are part of um, the qualifications of determining if something's rogue on your network or not. So along with those marker packets, we're able to identify those policies uh, from there. 
So the next step then is to look at in, um, configuring intrusion pre uh, prevention on there. So we just go into intrusion prevention, and again, we have uh, different levels here. So we have our block, uh, disrupt, uh, interrupt, and degrade. While we don't have time to go in through every setting on there, um, for instance, if we wanted to just disrupt, it's going to disrupt uh, the unwanted communication on any two channels. If we wanted to go four channels or more, we could go to uh, degrade, and it really depends on how many sensors you have out there. So we see our rogue access points, client prevention, um, so if there's, for instance, um, some sort of internet connection sharing, ICS, we're able to go ahead and block that as well. So if someone has Windows and they're trying to do an ICS um, bridging mode, we can go ahead and block that um, from there. So pretty easy. We come in and we say, go ahead and um, this is configuring the policy. And then the next step is that we just go ahead and activate simply by clicking intrusion prevention uh, for location and then save that from there. So looking at um, some of the en other enhanced features of this, again, we're right at the top of the hour and I feel bad, or top of the half hour, I feel bad um, that you guys feel like I'm uh, flying through this. We have a lot to cover and certainly if you want to look more in depth at a specific area, we can cover that as well. But some of our events view, we're going to see those unauthorized client connected to those APs. A rogue client is active and being able to uh, block that on our um, um, events. We can go ahead and upload a layout. So we can configure how many feet our store is or our location, uh, upload that map, and allows you to assign those APs to locations. What we're actually able to do then is look at coverage. We're able to see where people are in our store, which Julio is going to mention as well. But again, having that visit correlation of physical location to access points and where people are, what my coverage is like in my organization how many um, access points are in that location. And we can see here um, where uh, people are um, uh, located as well. We actually have a monitoring application. So as I showed you, we can go through it, look at the data usage on there, and then maybe go ahead and throttle back that, um, maybe it's a guest network, throttle back that uh, client so that they're not using all that bandwidth on there. Here's a great um, example of AP coverage. So in this case, we can do um, where do my access points reach or maybe where do my uh, sensors reach. Again, sensors is that ability to send those patented packets across the network or across the air and see where my rogue uh, devices are. So again, by uploading that um, uh, a Visio diagram or that office layout, and having that correlation with um, your feet on there, you can go ahead and automatically correlate where those uh, rogue devices are. Forensics, we can see how many, um, you know, as we look at duration of four hours, if there were any honeypots, any rogue access points um, that we automatically shut down or any denial of service attacks, and we can go ahead and just um, see that as well. We actually have a number of other scheduled reports that we can configure in there. Um, but considering that this is at the top of the hour, I wanted to thank you so much for your time. Hopefully that was helpful. Again, there's our YouTube channel, WatchGuard uh, NW. You can go view this recording as well as any other recordings. I have deep packet inspection on there, how to do application control, all sorts of useful tips on our uh, Firebytes or our WatchGuard channel. So with that, I wanted to thank you for your time. The next Firebytes is on uh, February 3rd. And a little typo there, I just, um, let me bring that, uh, we are now officially in 2017, so let me go ahead and correct that up. Um, there we go, 2017, so February 3rd of 2017, we have our next Firebyte session, and again, that's on getting back that, um, getting your return on investment from your access points, looking at deploying, for instance, um, you're looking at having a media or a social media campaign. We want to advertise. We want to grab all of our users' demographics, including their email addresses, their gender uh, from Facebook as they uh, join our Wi-Fi and being able to have a marketing campaign based on that. So again, we'll see you next time on February 3rd, but wanted to thank you so much for your time and feel free to let us know if you want us to dive into more specific areas for future Firebytes. So thanks and have a great day.